Welcome back to Sheet Metal is Fun. Today we're going to have our introduction into soldering. And our oldest daughter Heather said, hey, you guys are always making tool trays, bookshelves, organizer bins. How about you make a heart-shaped box in time for Valentine's Day? So today we're going to solder and uh, we're going to make the most interesting project we've had so far. We love you, Heather. Let's go inside. Welcome back to Sheet Metal is Fun. We're starting something new today. Um, several weeks ago, we got a new email address, and I've been letting folks know if you make something from our channel, any of these things, the lessons that we've gone over, send us a picture to sheetmetalisfun at yahoo.com. And look at this. Adam from Alabama. I want you to get a real good picture of that. Made a tool tray from our tool tray lesson. And he sent another picture that I didn't print out, but his tool tray looks awesome. And so Adam gets to be the first one. So here's the tool tray we made. Here's the one Adam made. His son is holding it. Here's the layout before he notched it and bent it up. So Adam gets to be... The first one in our book of fabulous fabricators. Sheet metal is fun. Here we go, Adam. I appreciate you sending us a picture. When we set out to do these lessons, we didn't know how far it would go. And look, we've made it all the way to Alabama already. Adam. Congratulations, first one in the book, Fabulous Fabricators. All right, so today's lesson is going to be on soldering. So there's a few things that you need to know about soldering. I tried, if you've watched me do any soldering here on the channel, uh, when we restored a sign here in town, we did some soldering, but I use an industrial type of soldering iron, but I went through several any one of that I could uh, recommend to you that you could use in your home shop. And I got this one. I got it on Amazon. And I don't get any kickback from them, but the, the thing is, is it's a really good soldering iron. So it's the Weller uh, 175 amp. Is there another, is there a model number? No, I mean watt, 175 watt. So... This is, this is the package that it came in from Amazon. This is what it looks like whenever you plug it in. So it plugs into your wall outlet. And uh, so today we're going to do a soldering lesson. Hopefully we can dispel a couple of myths. And show you how to simplify. And actually, uh, I like showing you why we do it and what result we're looking for. So, we, uh, we have our soldering iron, a couple of things that we need to solder. We have a cup. This is the lid off of a paint can. I really like these because I pour the solder into the middle section, and uh, the solder, uh, the uh, muriatic acid. You don't pour the solder. I pour the muriatic acid into this little middle cup, and it doesn't take much. If you can look in there, there isn't very much. What I've learned over the years is the more I pour in there, the bigger the mess is whenever I tip it over while I'm reaching for something else. So uh, this is a lid off of a can of spray paint. 
I put a small amount of muriatic acid, and uh, you can get that at most of the big box stores. It's also the same acid that you can get from a swimming pool supply. The only downside is it usually comes in a one-gallon jug, muriatic acid. Did I hold still long enough for you to see that? All right. So what we're going to make today, ordinarily at a sheet metal shop, we would use tri-bar solder. And that's because it has three sides to it, tri-bar. But what I want to use instead is the smaller solder. And this is actually old school lead solder. It's a, This is 50-50. So the first number is 10 ingredient, T-I-N. The second number is the lead. So uh, it's 50% 10 and 50% lead. I'm going to use this for our soldering demonstration. But then we're also going to finish off our heart-shaped box. And we're going to solder this with lead-free solder. So it's specifically lead-free. And I'll explain that later on in the program. The lead-free solder is more expensive because... Uh, uh, silver is one of the ingredients so this is just tin and lead and this has uh, it has silver it has tin and sometimes copper but no lead lead is the thing they want to uh, they want to uh, try to phase out so anytime we handle lead or deal with lead or solder with lead you always want to wash your hands very very well and uh, so this is what we're going to use Old school, 50-50 solder, 50% tin, 50% lead. Then after that, for our other second uh, part, second phase of today's lesson, we're going to use lead-free solder. All right, so the last lesson, we made this organizer bin. I originally made these... 40 years ago when I was practicing for a contest, a sheet metal contest that I was going to be in. And so in our soldering lesson today, I want you to, to imagine two scenarios. One is we're going to solder this thing up and make it watertight. Whether we solder it on the inside or the outside depends on what we're going to do with it. If we're going to uh, contain a liquid and the liquid is going to be inside the vessel, inside the, the tray, then we want to solder it on the inside. If we're going to put this over the top of something, and we're going to try to keep the rainwater out of entering, if this was a, let's say this was something we didn't want water to get into, then we would solder it on the outside. The reason that sometimes it's on the inside, sometimes it's on the outside, because where this tab is, we've bent this tab around and pop it, it, we want our solder to seal the area where the water, we want our solder <laughs> to seal the water out. So we don't, if, if we're trying to keep water from getting into a, into the building, we wouldn't solder it on the inside because then the water could go and find its way in between the tab and the vessel. So we always want to put our solder in the place where it is facing the water. So if you look inside here, let's see, I'm going to hold that still for a minute. And hopefully you can see I've soldered this seam on the inside. The inside solder would be, if we were going to fill this up with liquid and we don't want the liquid to escape, we would solder it on the inside. On this end, I've soldered it on the outside for the other application, the application where we don't want the solder to get, we don't want the water to get in between these and it'll cause rust. So we always want to put the solder on the side where the water is. Solder water yeah let's go with that so what we're going to do we got our iron plugged in 
We're going to heat this up. We're going to heat up the iron. And today, since we're going to be soldering, we're not only going to wear our reading glasses, we're going to wear safety glasses. Come on, safety. Number one. So one of the things we have to do to prepare the, the project for solder is we have to take the glaze off of the galvanized finish. The reason that galvanized works so well and the material lasts so long is that it's very slick and it's, it's non-porous. So that's why galvanized metal works so well outside but what we want to do in order to perform the soldering function, we have to take that slickness off. We have to take off the oxidation. And in order to solder it, we have to get down to the, get the slick off, get the oxidation off. So what we're going to use to get the oxidation off is the muriatic acid. So whenever you're applying your muriatic acid, always control control the application of muriatic acid as much as you can because the solder will flow to any place where the solder where the muriatic acid has been so let's just imagine if we had a brush that was three inches wide and we added a three inch wide swath of muriatic acid the solder could actually go anywhere where that where that muriatic acid is it could go anywhere so what we want to do is always maintain the smallest path that you can. But now what we're going to do here is we have some muriatic acid in the middle of our cup. We're going to dip our brush in there. And we're going to slowly go down the side. I want to get plenty in there because one of the things we want to do, we'll let it sit for a minute. You can see it begin to change colors. That means it's doing the job we want it to do. Yeah, look at that. I like that. You can, I don't know if you can see it bubbling from the camera. Can you see that, hon? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to let it sit right here for a second and do its work. One of the things about soldering is it doesn't like a gap. So your seams have to be very close and very tight for solder to work its best see i only have one rivet at the top there's a little gap right here and the solder doesn't like that so what we're going to do let me see if our iron is hot enough to oh the other thing we need whenever we solder is we're going to need our a little stainless steel toothbrush once you decide to use it for solder you want to not use it for brushing your teeth anymore. I'm looking at the end here, and I don't think we're hot enough to solder yet, but we have one of our scribes that we had, that we made earlier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of solder. Now, sheet metal... Sheet metal workers would be pretty mad if you cut anything except flat stock. You can only cut flat stock with your, with your snips. But we're going to make an exception because this is lead. Can you see that? I've cut a couple of pieces there. That's the one exception. If you want to make a sheet metal person mad, grab their snips and cut a piece of wire. But don't make them mad. Most of them are ornery. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this piece of solder that I cut off of our roll. I'm going to get it over there where the gap is the highest. Now, what I'm going to do with this, the reason I use the scribe, because it has a really good point on it. I'm going to press down and close that gap. That's down and closed. That's up and open. Let's do it one more time. Look at that. Ooh. All right. Let's get this right over here. Now, whenever we're soldering a seam like this, 
uh, what we're, there are basically three types of uh, heat transfer. Radiation, like the sun, we get the heat from the sun. Then there's convection, where it's indirectly warmed up uh, through moving air. And then the third, which is what we're going to use today, is conduction. We're actually making a, a contact, and through that contact, we're going to make the transfer of heat. So what we want to do is we want to use our soldering iron. You can see the tip here. This is called a chisel tip, which uh, is more of an all-around style tip. Don't touch that because... It's going to be hot. I think it's around 700 degrees. So since we're using uh, conductivity, we, what we want to do is make the best transfer of heat from our iron to our work. Work is whatever we're working on. So let's say, look at this right here. Look at my contact patch from my iron to my work. It isn't uh, much of a contact patch at all. So we're really not going to get much conduction of heat through from the iron to the work. But now if you get real close and you watch, now right here I have the largest contact patch of my hot iron on my work. Now I'm getting the maximum conductivity. The heat that I want to get to my work is getting there because the large surface area. So let's see if our iron is hot enough. So what we did is I cut a little piece of this solder. Ordinarily, I would have the solder in one hand and the iron in the other. But we've cut a small piece so that I can push this down with one hand. We're going to tack solder that on. Now, since I use the scribe, it isn't going to try to stick to it. That's why I didn't use a blunt instrument. I could actually, I may have actually soldered it on. So, what we want to do here is, is uh, getting back to uh, uh, conductivity, where we want to transfer the most heat from our iron into the work. So... Whenever you're soldering, now you and I know this piece, this component goes all the way under this lap. It goes all the way to the corner. So what we want to do with our iron is we want to put the iron on that place where we want the solder to go. You know what? Let's do let's do something here real quick. I'm going to take two pieces of the same 26 gauge galvanized what we're using and we are going to put some muriatic acid on here what i want to show you is how solder it becomes liquid the lead becomes liquid and when it's in its liquid state it can be moved through capillary action. So what we're going to do, this is the top one, this is the bottom one. The bottom one laps under the top one. And we want to uh, attach these two pieces. We're going to do that by, there's the seam right there. So I want to put most of my heat, I don't, so I'm going to show you this is wrong. Look, small contact patch right on the seam. We're not trying to just solder this seam. That's no way to do it. What we want to do, I'm going to make sure, does that focus in in there real good? So this is bad. All this is going to do is temporarily seal that crack. This could be a rain gutter and it may work for three days. But what we want to do is we want to draw the, the lead, the solder, all the way through capillary action and through conductivity, we want to draw that solder to the point where it goes in between the two pieces. I've been talking here long enough that my iron got a little bit of stuff on it. Okay, so we're placing the iron. 
And now we're going to add the solder in here. I should have clamped this down. Definitely should have clamped it. All right, let's see if we can do it since we're here. So I've got the iron largely where I want the lead to go, and my speed is very critical. If I go too fast, I'm not going to pull the solder in and have it go back where I want it. All right, so we're going to watch that for a second and let it dry. When it, goes from sil uh, when it goes from shiny silver to gray, that's when we know. If you watch it, it'll change colors right in front of you. Watch it. There it goes. I don't know if you just saw it. It just crystallized, and now we know it's safe to let go. So you notice that we put the iron over the double thick part. I didn't put the iron over here on the single. I put the iron on the double thick part. We're going to squirt that off with some water. So now, through capillary action, the solder went in between the two pieces. That's our top. I'm going to flip this over. And it went through so far, the lead actually ran out the back side. So what we've done is we filled this entire void. This entire space is now filled with solder, which is actually a very, very uh, uh, rigid connection. So there's no way, matter of fact, here's the top. Here's where we soldered. What I want to do is I want to show you if I bend this it bends there and maybe you can see where the solder has gone all the way through and it has made a penetration all the way from where we were to the back side that and sometimes we don't have access to we're soldering a gutter so we laid the solder on top of where we wanted it to go and so the the lead when it becomes molten and liquid it's actually attracted to the heat and it's trying to get back here and do the work that we want it to do so there that is a bonded seam right there that would that is not going to come apart and so now let's do that same thing to our organizer bin Now, knowing what we know about conduction and, and the movement of the liquid solder, it's been a little bit here, so let's go ahead and give that one more fresh. Remembering to keep it as small as we can. And when I put the brush back into my paint can lid, I don't put it back in the acid. Put it over here where there's no acid. It'll make your brush last longer. The, ax the, the muriatic acid is very harsh on the brush. So don't just leave your brush in the acid. Put it out here. So now we've got it tacked, which closed up that gap. Now with what we learned on our lap seam, let's come over here. And we're going to be very careful not to undo what we've already done. We're going to let that sit there for a minute and then we're going to start at the top and work back toward our tack. So we're going to let this one cool off and that's going to hold everything in place because if we move before, did you see it? Did you see it just turned to gray from silver? So let's go over back over here, putting the, the maximum contact patch of the iron on the work. We're going to add our lead in, our solder. There 
There we go. Boy, we're going good now. So now we can work back toward our tack. And our project isn't going to come apart on us. Watch it go from silver to gray. It's like watching paint dry. I see it going. There we go. Now it's gray. Now, while it's still fresh, I always say keep a squirt bottle of water around because the muriatic acid, its job is to degrade the finish of the zinc, which is what galvanized is. This is a zinc coating. And so I'm going to hold this. The part I want you to see is I want you to look right here on that seam. And you can see that the lead has sweated all the way through. Let me get my pointer stick out here. If you look right here, you can see the lead where it has come all the way through. I'm hoping you can pick that up right there. And we did that by laying the contact patch of our soldering iron as flat as we could to get the most heat transfer we could. I think that looks good. I think we got it. So we soldered this on the outside because we have a stovepipe sticking out of the roof and we want to keep the water out of it. So we soldered this on the outside. Now... We've decided, no, wait, that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to pour uh, water into the container. So now we're going to solder this one on the inside. So let's get back to our muriatic acid. We want to let it do its work. I like to wait, I don't know. Let's say that right there, whatever that was, five seconds. So what, what we're doing, can you see the bubbles? That's mur the muriatic acid having a reaction to the zinc, which is what we're asking it to do. We're asking it to not play well with others. We're asking this acid to remove the shiny part of the zinc, the part that makes it work so well. So now what we're going to do, back to our snips, look at what we're going to do right here. I'm going to hold this at an angle. Did you see what I just did? I just cut this solder. Now we could find something over here to hold it up, but we're not going to do that. We're going to hold it with one hand. And we're going to drop this right in here. And we're going to slowly work our way out. Look, I'm actually tilting the box, the organizer bin. spot there oh that was that what you just heard was the water drop I put water on the inside there so what it did is it just ran down and got into our project so you can see a couple of places a couple of places where it didn't go well because the water ran down and sealed and uh, cooled the uh, the solder before it had a chance to flow out like we want it to. So let's go ahead and add one more pass of muriatic acid. Oh yeah, one more piece of solder, a little less this time. And now, let's finish off those areas that we didn't get. Oh, 
Okay, here we go. I'm watching the lead to make sure it flows out and does what I want it to do. Now, we're going to let that sit. It's going to go from silver to gray. All right, we're there. And I don't know if the camera can pick up, see where the acid has come through the tab on this lap. You see the black acid? It has drawn the solder around. So now on this side, we're not going to get a full penetration. The reason we, we not is because, as we talked earlier, I use the, the uh, iron up on its edge. And I held it this way, which gave us a little less penetration. But what it did give us, let's get that off the outside. What it did give us is a sealed inside. So this is what, this is how we would solder it if we were trying to maintain liquid in the vessel and I would also come back and touch up that rivet that rivet right there all right so let me think whenever we were soldering whenever we were soldering our lap if you solder on a piece of wood the uh, the the sap from the wood even though there's very little in here it will come up through and it'll interfere with your joint. So what you what I've done here is I just cut uh, a soda can and laid it out and we soldered. We did our soldering on top of this soda can just to isolate it from the wood. And that way we got a full penetration and we did that because we laid the iron on the double seam. I didn't come over here and just run my iron across the the gap across the the seam i actually laid it on top and forced the solder to go in between and through capillary action get drawn all the way into the project all right so having done that what we are going to do today is we are going to make a heart-shaped box so what I've done here is I cut a heart I used that trick that probably we all used in school I took a piece of paper folded it in half drew half of the heart cut it out unfolded it that way both sides are the same and then I cut that piece out and then what I did is I soldered this vertical strip all the way around the heart. So that's what we got there. So what we're going to do now, continuing on with creativity and soldering, now we're going to set aside our 50-50 solder, and we're going to get out our lead-free solder. And so we're going to cut... Another box, what I want to do is make one that fits inside the other. So let's go back to the pattern that we know we used for this. Let's go back to that. And I'm just going to make this pattern a little smaller so that whenever we make the other piece that's going to look like this but just be slightly smaller, it'll fit inside that one. So I think around an eighth of an inch. So this is our second heart. 
making it smaller and make sure it fits inside the bigger one. I had the weirdest dream last night. I dreamed that I'd been wearing the same shirt to work every day for the past 25 years. What do you think that means, huh? I don't know. I'm gonna go to one of those dream, one of those dream readers that could probably tell us. What a weird dream though. All right, so we made one heart. Now we made one that's a little bit smaller to make sure it fits inside. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> usually I cut everything to, well, it's what we call IMS tight. Usually I do that, but this time, I took some of the fight out of the dog. So here we go. Let's lay this on here. I like these markers that are water-based markers. Look at that. I'm telling you what. I think Yeah, we should have had we should have had one. We should have had one of the grandkids do it. Like, hey, we got another lesson coming up. Can you draw a heart for Pop Pop? <laughs> All right. We're getting through it. Yeah. All right. This is looking so good. All right. There you go. Smarty pants. So now well, let's cut that out. But we talked earlier about the 8515 rule, and that is whenever you're shearing, when you're operating a pair of snips or even a shear, around 85% of the energy that you add to the snips goes into performing the cutting motion. There's 15% goes toward moving and separating the pieces to allow the, sh the shears to move forward. So right now I'm doing two things. I'm cutting and I'm also spreading. If you look, you know what, maybe if you, if you watch from right there, can you see the spreading? So I'm doing two things. I'm shearing and spreading. Roughly 85% shearing, 15% spreading so now we cut off a lot of the excess we got the hard work out of the way let's come on through here never go to the end of your snips so since part of what we're doing when we're cutting is we're shearing and spreading now that I have a smaller piece it's easier for me to perform this shearing and spreading function. So that's the reason we cut the bulk of it off first. And then we're going to come back. We're going to do as much of this with the reds as we can, or rights as we call them, because they go in your right hand. Following this line around here. Never go to the end of your snips unless you're notching. So now we've done everything we can with our reds. Now, with our greens or lefts, we can come on back in here and finish that cut right around to where we want it.
Man, I like that. Reds and greens, baby. So we're going to take this. And I'm just going to go around here. Flatten that out. Sometimes in the shearing process, it can become a little deformed. So you can see, I'm not trying to stretch the metal. If I strike it very hard, I would stretch it. But we don't want to stretch it today. We just want to flatten it out. Look at that. All right, so now what we're going to do, because we are making the other half of this, we're going to take our piece and we're going to put a bend in it just like that so since since we're just roughing this in all i want is basically the middle of this strip so look at that that's not the middle the middle is right here where it bounces on my finger look at that so now i know if i grab this I'm not measuring it because this is not something we're going to measure. I'm making sure that this is a 90 degree corner. There it is. 90 degrees. So we're going to push this over. Somewhere where it's roughly to that angle. Can you see that? I'm just going to move it around a little bit. All right. So that's close. Then we're going to take our sheet metal is fun uh, drink. And we're going to put this right here. And I'm going to fold this around this can. And we're going to do it the same going the other way. Oh, baby. Look at this. This is going to be amazing. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little solder right there at that intersection. And we're going to do that right here. Just so this thing doesn't try to jump around on us and attack us. Did you hit that harder turn? So, yeah, we don't want this the thing to attack us. We're going to clamp it in place. So now we're going to go back to our same trick. But we're using lead-free solder. And we're going to cut us several pieces of this. We're doing that because we're going to be holding this. with one hand earlier I told you never pour more muriatic acid in there than you need this just shows you how awesome we are because we just used it all so now we're going to add just a few drops Wait for it. There it is. And now, if I sneeze somewhere along the program and I knock this off the table, it's hardly even worth talking about. So, the muriatic acid is right in the middle. We're going to add some right here. Make that our first contact point. 
as our iron sits over here, take a look at this. As the iron sits in the atmosphere, it's very susceptible to the impurities that are in the air. And those impurities will actually contaminate the iron and try to contaminate our work. So before we introduce this to our work, we're just going to clean it off with a stainless steel toothbrush. All right, we got that point right where we want it. Look at that. Good gracious, that's nice. All right. Can you see I'm wearing my safety glasses? All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look around here. And we're just going to tack solder our way around this thing. So let's go. Let's go a little ways. So I'm looking down the top and I'm tack soldering this vertical component to the base. Look at that. And a little acid in there. Another little bit of solder. So pulling this around. And that's why we just cut this piece long. We bounce it on our finger. That's how high tech that was. Then we're gonna get this over here. Tack solder that in. And we're just gonna continue around. This is going so well. We're not even gonna slow down around the corners. Got the muriatic acid on. Let's get our iron in here. I want you to look right here. I'm gonna use this as a pointer stick. I'm hoping you can see right here there's a thing right that's on good. You have to see it from this side. Right here, I have my vertical member too far. See this little ledge right here? That little ledge to connect, that means this is too far inboard. So you stay right there where you're at. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reactivate that solder. So I'm watching for that. I'm going to reactivate that solder and push this out where I really want it. I hope you saw what just happened there. Did you see that? See how we moved our the fence, this vertical member, we moved it out and corrected our mistake. So that's one nice thing about the solder. And I think you want, if you just stay right there, I'm going to put this one all the way down here. Because we've got a pretty good, it's almost a straight runaway here. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I'm going to finish it all the way to the point. to do is we're going to cut off so we left this long tail on here because we used it to our benefit we used it almost like a tool so I'm going to make an imaginary straight line straight up from that point I'm going to cut that off 
All right, now let me come back on this side. I'm gonna move my clamp instead of here, I'm gonna move it over here. Uh, let's add some more acid. I'm gonna get this piece over where I want it. Looking good, looking good. I'm just gonna keep walking it right around. I've, we're using this long length as a pry bar. And we're just gonna keep walking it around. Lead free solder. And I've used all my pieces of lead-free solder. Back to the lead-free solder. Let's go. One, two. All right. Now we're just going to keep working our way around. I'm going to hold this where I want it. Muratic acid. Take one of our little our little pieces. Put it right there where I want it. Hold it till it cools, which doesn't take long on a small tack. Look at this. I'm doing that left-handed. Can you can you tell that? That's awesome. What's this? Solder and iron. Left handed. Mm -hmm. All right. This is coming along so good. If this keeps up. We're going to have this thing done in time for Valentine's Day. So at this point, I'm going to pull this around to where I want it, and I'm going to put a mark. I just moved that piece out again, just like we did on the other side. And I'm going to hold this here, put a mark on it. And I'm going to cut this off. We're going to take our hand seamers, tongs, duck bills depending on what part of the world you're in and I'm gonna put it right on that mark so what I've done there is instead of our just two pieces coming down to a point we actually have a lap here and we've seen through our earlier how much stronger a lap is than a butt joint. Yeah, let's even that out a little bit. Yeah, 
I like it. Since we have it clamped right here, let's go ahead and add some muriatic acid. And a little piece of solder. Let's go ahead and make this seam up right here. We're also going to solder this on the inside, so if you're thinking that looked like the way I told you not to do it, good catch. All we're trying to do is move our vice grip. Once we move our vice grip, we can get in there and do what we really want to do. So now... Finish up the heart. Clean the soldering iron. Good now. Now I'm going to try to get our seam. So now you see I've got my iron laying on the seam. And that's actually going to draw it back into that lap. We're waiting for it to cool. So if you could see right here, you would see that the solder has drawn in between the two pieces. All right, now all we got to do is go back, fill in the spaces in between. So I'm just going to go acid all the way around. And you don't want to stay too long because we don't want to break the joints that we've already made. We've gone through all the trouble to make it. We don't want to have to make it again. One of the characteristics of the lead-free solder is it doesn't flow out as much as the old school life threatening lead so i'm just going back and filling in all the voids but being careful not to reactivate these tacks that are already in there so I'm going to start just to one side of it, but making sure that I don't heat it up and turn it back into liquid again, because then our project will fall apart. I see a little spot here. I just want to add a little bit of heat right there. Yeah, I like that. Oh. So good. Don't go back and reactivate these tacks. Let me 
unplug the soldering iron. So the next thing we're going to do is take our water bottle. Let's go back here. That neutralizes the acid so it can stop doing what it what we've asked it to do, and that was to take the shine off of the, the galvanized, the zinc. We're gonna file this down. Remember a file only cuts in one direction. The way I'm holding the file with the handle, it's only on the push. I'm gonna show you wrong. I'm looking around for my dad. He's been gone 19 years, but if anything would bring him back, it would be doing this. No, I don't see him. Always cut on the push. Oh, I probably should have tried this before we did it on camera. Make sure one fits inside of the other, just in case it doesn't work. All right, it works. You can watch. Oh, look at that. I never had one single, one single worry about it. One goes inside, one goes outside. Oh, do we have a towel? I got one right here. Don't go anywhere. Never worried about it for a second. So now we have a heart shaped box. And we went through the kitchen drawer, the kitchen drawer that always has odds and ends in it. And we have an old knob. You can go to the store and find some kind of sweet knob or you might make your own knob or you might decide to put a handle on it instead of a knob. Now, oh, look at this, screwdriver. All right, look that way for a minute. You're not looking, are you? Okay. You can look. There you go. A soldering iron, uh, a soldering lesson, and a heart-shaped box. That is full of candy. Who doesn't want that for Sweetheart's Day? 
or Mother's Day or uh, something to your uh, cardiologist. Your doctor, your cardiologist would love to get one of these. So just whenever you think, oh, where's our, um, where's our uh, rollout board at, baby? All right. Well, we did three things today. We had a soldering lesson. We had a lesson on how to make a heart-shaped box for your sweetheart, your mom, your cardiologist. And now I'm going to do something I've never done before, so I'm a little nervous. I mean, there's I'm going to do something for the first time in front of dozens of people. So we're going to do... Oh, this is the third part of today's lesson. We did soldering, heart-shaped box, and this is working good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, you know what? I feel like we ought to be out in the middle of a beautiful grassy area inside of a tent. And everybody watching should have an accent. All right. So here's the last part of today's lesson. Oh, yeah. Tell them I washed the box very thoroughly. Okay. All right. So my wife took the box after we made it. She took it inside, cleaned it spick and span. So now we have a heart-shaped box. And look at this. I'm not going to take a chance on anything. I'm just going to take this part off. Cookie cutter. Heart-shaped cookie cutter. With a what will soon be a exercise. In baking creativity. Look at that. Probably should have cooked it first. All right, soldering lesson. If you got questions on the soldering, send us your questions. We made a heart shaped box, and my wife already went inside. Made us a sheet metal is fun cookie. That's going to wrap it up real nice. Am I miss, missing anything, hon? No. No. That's it for today's lesson. Soldering with heart. Thanks for coming. Sheet metal is fun and delicious. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. See you guys next time.